I'd like to welcome you all and uh, this is your brother Osama Iqbal and inshallah I will be moderating this um, session titled The Struggle Within. Um, <clears throat> uh, next up we have uh, brother Kamal Saleh who is uh, inshallah going to be joining us all the way from Sydney, Australia with the 12 hour time difference. Uh, uh, if that's where uh, Brother Kamal is joining us from, we're really grateful uh, to have you with us. Uh, Brother Kamal Saleh, he is a media student who passionately is in spreading the message of Islam through me multimedia avenues. He has always been someone who has loved uh, to express himself through art. He is known for his spoken word talents across the world and has used his poetry in order to project the religion of Islam in a positive light. With that, inshallah, I give, pass the floor to uh, Brother Kamal, who is inshallah going to address the topic of pressed but not crushed overcoming our challenges. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum to all the viewers that are watching live and thank you to Ustada Aisha Prime and also to Brother Hamza Zotsas. Mashallah, that was a very, very beneficial talk and um, I loved listening to it after reading about some of it in his book, Mashallah. So the, the talk I was asked to present today was uh, pressed but not crushed. And I feel like this is a perfect description of exactly what we are seeing right now in today's day and age, whereby we are seeing faith as themselves because with so many forthcoming issues, whether that's addiction to social media, whether that's the uh, rampant over-sexualization of society, whereby we're seeing promiscuity at an alarming rate. We're seeing films, music, Pop, pop culture, TV shows, all shaping a culture that is at direct odds with Islam and what we know as Muslims. And we're seeing basically a concerted effort by society to drive humanity in a certain direction, which is void of spirituality, void of decency and void of any, I guess we can say a moral code. And perhaps one of the the most difficult issues, especially for our, our, our youth today, I would have to say, and, and that's probably from, um, you know, experience dealing with the youth, working with the youth, I feel as though um, issues like pornography and promiscuity are really, really um, pressing our youth to a point where they're at odds with themselves because we're seeing uh, images which have never, ever been shown to humans before. At, a, at an exponential rate, we're seeing the influx of uh, music videos, whereby we're seeing 90% of music videos have sexualized imagery. Um, 90%, when I say of music videos, I'm talking about those in the top 100, those which were in mainstream culture. We're seeing lyrics, 90% uh, of lyrics in, in the top 100 uh, billboard chart have sexualized lyrics and um, these uh, messages are constantly being bombarded and barraged at our youth today and it's very very hard i guess for the muslim of today's world to maintain firm and to to hold firm to his deen and you know as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us that a time will come on our ummah whereby holding on to your deen will be like holding on to hot coals and i feel like this is exactly the time we're, we're living in right now whereby that just just trying to stick to your deen trying to stick to your principles is so hard you just want to let go because it's much easier to just go along with the trends and follow everything else that the world is putting forth at us today and i think it's important that we want when we want to address this issue and we want to address um this, uh, uh, this, this challenge that Muslims are facing today that we first and foremost acknowledge that it is difficult. You know, we're not going to stand on our high horses and say, oh, this is a challenge and look how uh, the people have become corrupt. Look how far they have went and look how far they have went astray. Because as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he teaches us, إِذَا قَالَ الرَّجُلْ هَلَكَ النَّاسِ فَهُوَ أَهْلَكُهُمْ He says, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if a man comes and he says, all the people are corrupt and all the people are destroyed. In one narration, he says, then this person has destroyed them. And in another narration, he says, then this person, he is the most destroyed of them. So we don't want to have that mentality when we want to challenge this issue. Rather, we want to have an open mind, understand and acknowledge that it is difficult so that we can uh, take this challenge head on and overcome it.
So after understanding that it's difficult and understanding that as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that those issues that surround the fire and those issues that will lead to the fire, as, as we've seen, whether it's uh, promiscuity, adultery, fornication, um, the, the, the rampant vices that we're seeing in society today, he says those issues that surround the fire, he says that um um I mean sorry he says fire is surrounded by desires, pleasurable things. So we have to understand that Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I believe uh, we have some technical difficulty with Brother Kamal. <clears throat> Just waiting for an update. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm sorry about that. The internet isn't, uh, I guess, probably the best here in Sydney, but I'll, I'll continue, inshallah. No, please. So, do. just. Uh, uh, so taking off from, from where I unfortunately left off, and um, we have to understand that it is difficult, so we, sh we shouldn't undermine the struggles that people are facing today. And at the same time, we should remind people that are facing these struggles, which is pretty much everyone alive in today's society, is that uh, the virtue of holding firm to your deen in such a time is so greatly rewarding. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he actually teaches us, he goes, al ibada the worshipping Allah in a time of halaj, which Imam Nawi describes as a time of fitan, a time of fitna, a time of tribulation and, and, and mass confusion. He says that the person who worships Allah in such a time and holds firm to his deen like we can, we can see, this person you will have the reward kal hijratin ilay. He will have the reward of like a person who goes in a hijra, in a in the migration to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we don't need no introduction to know how grand such a reward is uh, for, as though you are performing a hijrah to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But look, all that's, you know, <coughs> fine and oh, it's difficult. We know what's rewarding to, to, to be someone who holds firm to his deen in this time. But how do we do it? And I, I feel like this is the number one question, the golden question. How can I strengthen my nafs? How can I strengthen my soul to fight the challenges that are ahead of me today? How can I strengthen myself to take these challenges head on and not be defeated by everything this world throws at me despite the, the difficulty, the immense difficulty we're seeing today? And I guess some points I can put forth to you and these are through my own work and also from what I've learned from, from the scholars themselves. I feel like I can give you an action plan to really strengthen yourself against all these challenges, whether it's addictions, pornography, um, illicit relationships, which are um, being thrown to us at an alarming rate. We're even seeing apps promoting this stuff, you know, for the sole purpose of promoting fornication. So how do we make ourselves strong in such a time? Let me break it down for you in, in a, in a pr pretty concise manner. I won't be able to cover everything in an exhaustive manner, but inshallah, it will be able to help you. So, so take some notes. First and foremost, know your enemy. Who is your enemy? A shaytan. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, he is your enemy, so take him as an enemy. Take him as an enemy. Be wary, be aware and alert that the shaytan is in existence. The forces are at play. 
and know that he is at play and know that he is conniving. He is cunning. He's waiting to catch you out. He's, he's waiting to make you slip. So be aware of the shaytan. Be aware of his tricks. And as Allah says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ O oh, you who believe, do not even follow the footsteps of Satan. Because that's how Satan works. That's how the shaytan works. That's how he gets you. He doesn't get you by saying, hey, you know, come join this illicit relationship. Hey, come watch this uh, explicit movie. No, he'll get you footstep by footstep. He'll make you watch something subtly um, inappropriate. He'll get you to be in an environment where, where subtle inappropriateness is acceptable. He will get you to, to perhaps listen to a song or, or watch a certain film, which is perhaps not even that bad, but it will lead to, a, to, to another action, which will eventually make you fall. So this is very important, inshallah, for us to know. And uh, secondly, once you're aware of your enemy, and as they say in the art of war, a book, one of the best sellers, the art of war, he who knows his enemy, he, he need not fear a hundred battles because as long as you know your enemy and you know yourself, by the way, you will be safe, inshallah. So secondly, limit your exposure. We need to understand the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he teaches Hudayfa, he says, the tribulations will be presented to the hearts of people Udan, Udan, kal hasir. They will be like a mat. They will be constantly exposed to the people. So we need to make sure that we are limiting our exposure to such, <coughs> to such tribulations. Monitor what comes into your ears. <coughs> Monitor what comes into your eyes, whether that's TV shows, films, music. And I know that, that there's a debate about music, but if I'm telling you that the majority of mainstream music is calling you to haram, you need to be very mindful that this is having a subconscious effect on myself and what's entering into my heart. And if we are able to avert our gaze, avert our ears from even subtle things that trigger uh, uh, unfortunate, uh, 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 worse actions in, in, in the long run, you need to be able to stop it from the very beginning. So limit your exposure. Third, uh, a uh, piece of advice I can give is to avoid idleness. As a Muslim, we should always be in a state of busyness. Be, and I, I'm not trying to say hustle, hustle, hustle till the wheels fall off and, and not give time for your, for your mental health. No, no, no. I'm not trying to say that. What I am trying to say is be busy. As the, as the scholars say, uh, in, in regarding to your nafs, If you do not busy yourself in truth, you will become busy in falsehood. So however you can keep yourself busy to, to not give the shaitan any, any time of yours. You know, the shaitan tries to come to you, you're busy, you're at the masjid, you're in a class, you're with a group of friends who are good companions, who are good friends. You're, you're busy um, trying to keep up with your five daily salah in the masjid. You're busy reading a book, learning, educating. You're busy in, in, in khair, in, in truthfulness. So when the shaitan does come to you, he won't find you free. So when the shaitan comes, I ain't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? You're busy. You're busy in the pursuit of Allah, in goodness. And even if you're doing something halal, mubah, it's fine. But as long as you are aware of these triggers that are surrounding you, that's very important for us to know. And, and fourthly, um, I'm not sure how much time I have left, but fourthly, a very important uh, point I wanted to, to raise is as members of a family, we need to make sure our families are looking after one another. As Allah says in the Quran, Look after those that are closest to you. We live in a time where unfortunately there are so many changes that are happening so fast that we don't have enough power to stop them from, from happening. We have multi-million dollar corporations producing filth. And we, we, we just saw in the past week or the past two weeks exactly what I'm talking about. So we can't control these multi-million dollar corporate giants from corrupting society. It's going to happen. But what you need to do is guard your families. Guard your brother, your sister, your wife, your son, your daughter. And everyone, if every every family can look after themselves, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala te teaches us to do in the Quran, bi'idhnillah, we will be able to develop a fortress in our home. So that when it comes to this battle, 
that we are seeing unfold today, our fortress will be strong. Our base will be strong. And be idhnillah, when your family is strong and looking after one another, we can challenge these battles. And last but not least, before I do wrap up, before I do wrap up, I just want to mention that strength is only from Allah. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So without the help of Allah, without the nasr of Allah, without the support of Allah, you won't be able to take these challenges head on. They are big. They are difficult. Yes, it's rewarding to 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 overcome them and fight them. But we can only do that with the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So I'll end with that. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, there, there is so much more to speak about, but just in this small time, I hope that's of benefit. Allah you better fikum. Jazakallah khair, brother Kamal. Uh, mashallah, it was a very inspirational um, speech, uh, brother Kamal. Uh, this question is um, about addiction. First off, it's difficult for someone who is in it to recognize that they are addicted to something. So, how can I uh, kind of, you know, how do I realize or recognize or reach a conclusion that I am addicted to something and you know, what are some of the ways of overcoming addiction, which is a little more stronger than just, you know, maybe committing a sin? <clears throat> um, so when it comes to your addiction, it actually really depends what addiction that is. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a specialist when it comes to addiction in and of itself. But if you are addicted to something or, or you have a habit that is something haram, something sinful, as I said, that is really destroying your iman, destroying your health. I felt like the small pieces of advice that I gave before in terms of being wary of that which triggers you, that which eventually leads you to falling into the sin. If you're just wary of those thoughts, because even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would say, and, and I'm talking about um, uh, uh, illicit uh, sins in this case, he goes, your thoughts will have a hav, they will have a portion of 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 uh, illicitness or or, or or as 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 he says havun min zina so you have to be wary of these thoughts from even entering your heart so the second you hear these thoughts coming you need to avert them straight away because we have this uh, i guess it's a misconception in today's day and age where people think you're not held accountable for your thoughts which is true to a certain degree but those who who spend time and, and really just like let those thoughts sink in. So those thoughts turn into an action plan. No, that's when it does become sinful. If it's, if it's a passing thought, that's fine. It will go like you, you won't be held accountable for it. But if you're allowing that thought to simmer and, and, and you're allowing that thought to calculate and, and, and to become an action plan so that you can perform the certain action, you, you, this is this is many of the ulama from what I've learned is this is you're falling into sin so you need to be wary of even allowing those thoughts to come to you so uh, avert the thought because by the time you go into the, the actions it gets much more difficult to let it go so the second you have a thought let it go and as I said try to keep yourself busy in environments where you can't even allow those where, where those thoughts won't even come to you but as I said, if you're in, a, in an environment where music's playing and the music's bombarding your ears with certain subliminal messages, you're not really doing yourself any favors. And so just be, be wary of your environment, be wary of your thoughts. And that's probably the best advice I can give so that perhaps with the help of Allah, You'll be able to. You'll be able to overcome these challenges. It's not hard. It's not easy. No one's saying it's easy. Everyone's struggling in today's day and age. The statistics prove it for themselves. So we just need to be strong and be We can overcome them. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair, brother Kamal. Again, thank you for joining us. May Allah Azza protect you, bless you, your efforts, your families. Inshallah, make you a source of much khair um, for all the audiences. Inshallah, where we apply what you taught us individually and at the same time take that to our communities and societies to make uh, them better. Uh,